So I've missed one more Monarch's journey. And I'm actually quite interested in him because I feel like this might be... Well, it could have been one of the only tribal ones. I don't even know if we've done a tribal Monarch's journey. Uh, so we would be playing High Chief Mindaugas. We haven't done this one yet and I think... Since uh, Crusader Kings 3 is at the time of this recording about a week and a half out from release, I have a feeling that's not going to be another Monarch's Journey in Crusader Kings 2. So I want to finish this up and maybe I can manage by the time of Crusader Kings 3 releasing. We'll have to see. So without further ado, let's jump right in here, set it to Iron Mode. Aztec Invasion off and we start the game and we want to save it to the cloud because I never trust anything else these days with my save games on Crusader Kings 2. Plus it prevents us from cheating so you know that all you see is the truth because you can still save games scum in Iron Man if you play locally. Right, with the Monarch's Journey that we recently played as the Grand Mayor Botstein of Gotland we are actually kind of familiar with this area here of Lithuania. And we are pagan. While we are feudal, we are still pagan. And already the Teutonic Order has established itself next to us. So this is going to be a rough one. A very rough one. So let's check out uh, what the Monarch's Journey is about. Okay, that's good because <laughs> this would have been probably my first... Um, my absolute first action as well. Become a Christian King just to reduce the uh, chance of being targeted by a crusade <laughs> up here. This is a crazy, scary situation. If, if you watch at the... Let's have a quick look here at the religious uh, tab. We are very much the last of our kind. Um, and I do not believe we would be able to stand up to the rest of the Christian world here. However, there is a lot of orthodoxy here, so we could go either way, Catholic or Orthodox. But quite honestly, um, I think it's going to be Catholic for us. And we can do this whenever we like. This is... Um okay, so this is not as easy as it sounds. We have to hold the Kingdom of Lithuania, which right now we're not doing. We are just a duke. Um... We must be Catholic, okay, no choices there, and we must be crowned by the Pope. And we have to control all the Jure provinces of Lithuania, which uh, we'll go and check out in a moment. Okay, let's see, we need to convert provinces in our realm to Catholicism. And writing history, while re historic records of the only Christian king in Lithuania are scarce, ensure that it, this isn't the case this time around. Construct a great library and fill it with... Uh, book collections. Progress continues. Okay, so there are no challenges for us to complete with this man, uh, High Chief Mandaugus. Um, let's see. I don't, I don't think we get the info tab here, so we can't really read about him. That's a bit of a shame. But going by what uh, is going on here, apparently uh, this man was the only Lithuanian Catholic king. Right, so the first order of business would probably to become uh, a convert or we pick the ambition to where is it become king of lithuania because while we are a pagan and with a succession to elective gavel kind which no it's agnatic gavel kind um let's see could we could we do this still So only with elective gavel kind and pagan we would have unlimited use of the subjugation castle spelly within the kingdom. But first uh, let us have a quick look at what belongs de jour to the kingdom of Lithuania. And I see a major problem right there because we will have to fight against, this is not the Teutonic order by the way. No, no, it's the Teutonic order. So we will have to eat up the Teutonic order. Uh, that's gonna be an issue. I'm quite certain that's gonna be an issue. Uh, because if we check them out, well, they, they're not too strong. We do have a bunch of troops ourselves. But they are, of course, Christian. They don't have a lot of gold. 
Right, okay, let's check our situation right now. We do have an heir who has no sort of direction in his life and he's bad at everything except intrigue, so let's push him toward that so he maybe becomes something decent. What do we do? Rulers cannot demand conversion. Ru temples, priests, marry, religion allows women to own temple holdings. Rulers can raid, oh, raid infidel neighbors for loot. That's a good one. That's going to help us quite a bit to soften up the Teutonics. Um, we are hard to convert. We can take up to three concubines, also good. Non-pagans with low technology have a very low supply limit in remove our country. So if they come here, they will be easily killed. We could be reformed. There is and can exist no religious hand. Okay, doesn't really help. Inferior at conversions, rulers cannot declare holy wars. Okay. There are some benefits to this. All the kids lack focus, so let's try and push them into directions that make sense for them. This one might be good at this. And this one also, while it's a girl, it's not gonna really matter all that much. But we'll still do something with them. Okay, special minor titles. We need a designated region. We're just going to go by who likes us and who kind of works out for these things. Our son and heir will be our cupbearer. So we build up his prestige and all stuff already and give him a little bit of a salary as well. Um, a champion. Champion of the realm. Clearly. Our kinsman. Master of the Blade, also someone who's good with this. This. Master of the Bow, also someone who's good with this. This. <laughs> Venerable Elders, we don't have all that many Elders, which probably doesn't bode too well. And... <laughs> Let's make this man here. The Court Tutor, we don't have... Ah, this guy we can replace. <clears throat> so we want to set our crown focus in Vilnius. Vilnius. Check, it's actually the best county that we got. By a bit of a long shot. <clears throat> we could upgrade our castle walls because we don't have money for anything else. Need a character focus, what are we good at? Business, stewardship. We should probably go the business route to potentially accure some money. Um, yeah, now the ambition. Could groom an heir, but we're kind of decently set up already. So I think we'll try and become king of Lithuania. Again, we don't really have it in us with the wrong stuff here. If pagan with succession laws let set to elective candidates. Okay. If the fabricate claims councillor mission is available, it may acquire claim. On Lithuania with this ambition, there is also reduced cost for creating the kingdom who does not exist yet. The ambition cannot be cancelled. Right, I, I'm fine with not being able to cancel this ambition. Let's find us a wife, maybe one who offsets, either offsets or complements our uh, situation here. And um, hmm. she's good at both, or rather the best at this and all the options. So let's get her. It also gives us. A non-aggression pact with someone doesn't look like it's within our realm so it doesn't really matter all that much but we should look for some sort of uh, ally in in some way shape or form but I still believe we should quickly turn to becoming a um, a Christian state Order disputes, we can't afford these. We could extort tribute, which is probably also a good idea to quickly shape up. Extorting tribute will give us someone who will join us in our wars. Or we could conquest this. Conquest of Lukum. Why? Pagans and nomads can conquer single border countries without specific reasons. Norse pagans can also take any coastal country. Okay. We could get this. Is this part of Lithuania? Okay, our succession law is kind of terrible. Which we can't change right now anyway. And I also don't want to put it to elective gavel kind. 
Um, Agnatic Gavelkind isn't great because our titles get split up still. So we lose the counties or pieces of the counties that we have. Isn't ideal for the type of ruler we are. Um... Okay, we are feudal, so no chicanery with our tribal stuff, so we know how this works, alright. As you can tell, and if you've watched any other of my videos, you know, I take my time with things and I kind of consider stuff first. Let's see, can we maybe conquest of this? Of Grodno. Grodno, 1800. We have a good amount of people, so we could potentially wage two wars at once. But I'd rather go one by one. Okay, so let's go for this because it's part of what we want. Alright, let's raise our troops, let's raise our vassals. And we all come together here. Am I good enough to lead troops? I am not, so please do not make me lead troops. And we're still unmarried, but I think we sent out for one. Let's uh, take a concubine. Maybe there's someone on board. Oh, looky there. She's she's decent. So let's have at least one concubine. We're going to check the world real quick to find more ones. She's a bit old, so we're not going to get her. Okay, we need to speed this up a bit. And definitely our marriage is everyone's concern. Compose a book, which is probably a good idea. Pick a patron diet de deity. Yeah, let's compose a book. And we are very good at this, so we will write about managing a realm. Prince Archbishop. Eberhard II, a preacher in the service of Kaiser Friedrich II of the Holy Realm, has arrived in Vilnius. He has little regard for the old faith, declaring it sinful. Yes, let us have this man and allow him to teach of his uh, non pagan ways. We're going to follow. Oh, we actually get the battle, which is fantastic. That way we don't have to hunt him down. Let's give ourselves a little bit of another edge there. So we are clearly crossing a river. And one of our commanders has improved significantly. Good stuff. Why were you joined by these guys? What binds you together? There is no pact. Why are they joining you? Okay, but it does not matter too much. Let's uh, fight them immediately. Well, he called him in. Are you the suzerain or something? Oh yeah, he's a... That guy down there is a tributary. That's how that worked. Okay, got it. Figured it out. All fine, all well. Since we're taking out both armies separately, it'll be fine. Okay, what did I just say about taking them out separately? Let's check our battle here. Okay, one flank's looking good, the other flank's not. I don't have the money to do something like this right now. Okay, we lost already one flank. So this battle is probably lost. Uh, should we join a secret society? What societies are there? The band of worship by hunters and warriors alike. Huntress goddess of the forest. Her followers wear wolf pelts. Dana is known as the animal of the... Uh, I don't want to join the cold ones, really. So, but do apply for this here. Gladly to fight to prove ourselves. A demonstration duel, eh? <laughs> okay. Uh, we were wounded. 
but more in, in more than one way because we're just losing our battle down here for no good reason because very much all of a sudden uh, the enemy army that fled was included in that fight okay since the duel we've been practicing with the captain and there's some budding friendship going on or we could become proud which I mean yeah no let's let's become friends why not so this wasn't great for us in any way shape or form select the war focus no I don't want that mission this will be difficult now I believe I did not check if, if they had a tributary. It also doesn't tell you, which is a bit of a shame. Right, what can we do to strengthen ourselves a little bit? We could get 171 more troops by standing down our own. Which we probably should do. Okay, well, 24 rows right there. We will be beaten immediately. Okay, and they are crossing a river to come fight us. Which I don't really enjoy. Because my troops are going to be too late to arrive. So we are setting ourselves up for a second failure. But let's just see how it works out. We could throw a bunch of mercenaries in there. However, they rise with zero. Like literally zero morale. And we also can't afford them. So uh, that doesn't work. Okay, let's uh, make sure we have at least some commanders riding this. our wife is pregnant we'll make a large sacrifice that's that has to be good enough all right so we did have a few reinforcements which is good and they are attacking at a disadvantage so while we have lost one flank they have lost two meaning we have a good chance of winning this one i'm not calling it done yet because um weird things have happened so it might just work out to our disadvantage but we have beaten them now and this is one of the ones where we will have to keep pressing our advantage okay let's pick a patron deity deity their stewardship for us yes so we will go to bountiful uh, zemina zemina yeah yeah that's perfect for us and we hope, of course, to prove our th ourselves a worthy follower. And we go up to 23. Our dear wife should rest. Um. He suggested that we build a great monument. Monthly piety gain, monthly piety gain. Uh, no. And we are going the wrong way, I think. Oh, no, no, no. They split up. So we're going to pick the weaker force first. Where are they going? Yeah, we're going the wrong way. That's not great. We're losing daylight here with picking the wrong routes. Okay, but he's coming up. That allow him to get locked into his movement. Now we attack him here. We get part of the army. How do we cross a river though? Dispatch some maids. I do not see a river that we're crossing here, excuse me. This game. The Dnieper. Okay, we lost a flank for good or bad reason and they still have this man who really makes things difficult for us. He might still win this. No, he, he's not gonna. <laughs> it's certainly not as easy as it should have been. Oh, would you look at that? For three years, we get personal combat skill plus, plus five. 
and people are going to be happy with us. So yes, sort of sacrificing them. Let's go face this smaller army. And we will go organize an expedition and we'll hire a crew of bandits to steal the ship. We don't have the money, but we're going to get some soon. There we go. Yes, you can come with us on this expedition, on this very fruitful expedition we're looking at. Okay, the peasants are not too super happy with the goings on of the Christian missionaries. Okay, we are unpious for traveling with thieves and whatnot. And a king of Poland has sent us another missionary, so we allow him in. We allow all the missionaries in. Oh, little daughter. Whoops, not the button I wanted. Let's have a check up on this gal. She will be this. I don't think we can really get any pacts going out here because we are to them pretty much a heathen. Are we not? Yep, we are infidels. So we could... Now there's no one here. There's only these guys. There's no one here <laughs> to marry us. Something up here, maybe? Don't really know. Okay, so they link up again. But at least we're not fighting at a disadvantage for once. He gets a dozen tough warriors, the best we can give him. He does have the good flank guy again, and we are losing a flank already. To one of his, so this probably means another loss for us. But I can't say for sure right now. Ah, there we go. We made it. Yes, this will be a most profitable agreement indeed. And due to our tricks and whatnot, we have become Midas touched, giving us even more stewardship going from 6 to 9. So we are at 26 stewardship right now, which is an insane amount. It's really good. And we get 292 gold, 150 prestige, city tax, castle tax, all of that up in Vilnius. And we become a trader, giving us a further two stewardship, bringing it up to 28 right now, which is absolutely crazy. And let us potentially become greedy, because I don't even care to pay this man properly. Good. Okay, so now let's uh, try and siege a bit, speaking off. Let's see if the world already is ready to give us commanders from all across the world. Nope, it doesn't look good. We're very much limited to what the local flora and fauna has. Let's check our own troops. We could get another 300 going. And actually, we can raise a little bit of an army here. So let's bring in the 102. Or, you know, let's not. And mess this up again. Okay, he changed his mind at the last second. So that's good. I want to win at least one siege. This one battle that we lost really broke us. It's 46% in his favor. That really slowed us down. Big shame. But he doesn't want to end this plot and he has 1,200 troops that can't really go and attack him. What are, what, what are you doing for me? What's your job? Speaking of jobs, let's uh, set something up. Okay, you go collect taxes. That's sometimes dangerous work. And you just go research cultural tech. I don't really care for conversion or hunting down apostates. 
They get to siege us too, which I don't really appreciate. A jihad for Jerusalem is indeed non, not a concern of ours, and we become scarred, which is great as an option. Real quick, this that's a family name. House Jediminitis? Jediminitis? Sounds like the flu for Jedi or something. Oh no, we need to jump on this army quick. Come on, finish the siege, please. Good. Good. We need to jump on them before they can consolidate their forces or before they do con consolidate their forces. Because they might just do that. Yes, the missionary can continue doing their missionary work. I am fine with that. Alright, so he comes to reinforce his troops now. One flank is entirely gone and we might potentially get another one in the battle. No, not so far. Ooh, okay. We broke two flanks, so this is good. This, however, is bad. Um... Okay, let's get some non-aggression packs at home going, if we can. Yeah, we need to secure the home front for now. And since there are no outside options anyway, might as well make sure that the home front is safe. Do what you need to do. Now we have non-aggression packs inside the realm. Uh, no. You get something cheap get this move over here dangerous faction still there yes that's very unfortunate why is my steward gone oh I think his father died or something don't I have non-aggression packs with you guys now? I do. Ooh, technology. Ah, technology that doesn't really help me right now because I don't have money. But it might actually do help us. So, okay, Castle Walls 2 is required. Castle Walls 2 we can build. So not nothing here is being blocked by technology. Everything is just blocked by money. So we will have to have a look here. What does this give us? Barracks 4. 4 Temple Town, okay. Castle Fortifications, Temple Fortifications. Fort 3. Uh, hmm. 3% quicker building. Or 6% more castle tax. What do we have here? Mainly castles and a few tribes. I don't think this... Uh, this is not going to make much of a difference right now. Where's castle town here? That's here. So we're going to go for this one. This gives us a quicker way to... Get a castle town upgrade. Okay, you're really good at this, so I have you be this. Still wonder how this works. How can you be in a faction if you have a non-aggression pact with me? Get that one left. They are coming back. I would like to finish the siege before we go attack them again. This is a drawn out war. Really taking a toll on us. Oh no. 
Oh, no, 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 no. You don't. Need to get in there, quick. Weren't quick enough. Ah, this doesn't look good for us. Yeah. Ouch. Big ouch. Big, big ouch. This is going to be really, really bad. Honestly, even... If we stand them down right now... Yeah, we lose... Half, so we can't stand them down right now. Um... Yeah, sure, we are open for suggestions, might become... How did they do that? I am impressed. You did really well. So we, what we will have to do is we have to stand down all our troops and raise everything back again. To get an army that can challenge this here. Because right now we are at about half strength. Become ambitious and close friends with the... With this guy here. Okay, let's stand these down and raise all our troops up from the ground. He might decide to attack our army as we consolidate instead of standing around there, sieging. Doesn't look like he's doing that though. I used to never do this, set down my armies, raise them back up again and attack again. Uh, because I didn't really realize the full potential of doing that and it, it's really really strong it's it's absolutely crazy strong so definitely consider doing these things now the question is where are you I mean from an army of 900 we go up to 1600 we are now again actually a force to potentially take these guys on. And now we definitely need to do that. Uh, though we would rather get all the morale that we can get. With low morale, things might go wrong. So we'd rather let them have this one siege. Especially since while they siege, they might still lose troops. Oh, very good. Okay. The time has come to embrace the lords. The Lord rather let us do this which also makes us lose our casa spelly which I did not consider but at least we are now no longer threatened by a potential crusade there and we could join a crusade which gives us a chance to get some real good resources so um, we will join here we will choose a beneficiary, which is our nephew, which is fine. Our beneficiary is going to get all the titles. I don't care about it. Uh, by the way, also another little trick. You can stand down troops on the move through this interface only. You can't stand them down by selecting them and pressing X. Oh, why do we get 5,000 all of a sudden now that we're Christian? A potential of 5,000? Why? Hmm. Interesting. Okay, now we definitely want to convert, so let's do that. Um, we could imprison him for no good reason. End your plot, boy. Are there more people? No, it's just this one. We would lose this county, which is just fine by me. All right, so now we're no longer at risk, basically. Could do a holy war for this now. Uh, we fought all this war for nothing now. Big shame. Do we have anything special here? No, no, no nothing special. Could swear fealty to him. 
which could potentially mean he revokes all my titles and stuff, but that would make us much more resilient. And then we can just kind of from the inside out take things out. We could attack individual counts and stuff like that. Rather than have to face the whole kingdom at once. I've never been a vassal to a Teutonic state, but that's an option. That's definitely an option. We have to weigh our options. Or we could force vassalization here, which we can't afford. Or we could go into border disputes, which are very expensive and piety, but that would be fine if we go to Holy War. I think the gold kind of adjusts with how many, uh, how, however much gold you have. So that might not work out too well. Right, uh, so what we will do, we have lost a lot of prestige for whatever reason. It'll be all fine if we join the, the crusade for Egypt. So Egypt is far away and I don't think we have a lot of ships we can raise with seven. Seven is enough for 700 troops. I think we should start moving. Um, so we'll raise our troops and move them all individually. We're not even going to combine them and start moving them down here. They will all eventually arrive, but uh, it will take them a while. If you don't move them in a pack, then if they touch upon land where there's a penalty for attrition or stuff, you lose less people. And you're gonna lose people on a long track like this. Just, just no, no way around that. Oh, very good. Military organization, which is definitely always nice. Global supply limits, much higher. Uh, infantry would be neat too. So it's between these two. I think we're going to go for military organization first. Especially since if we reach the next one it removes pagan homeland attrition penalty, penalty which is uh, very strong. See? All the attrition going on here. Smaller armies also kind of move quicker, so that's nice. He has become a flamboyant schemer, which isn't all very good. Let's get him a wife. Uh, no, you don't raise the cultural status stuff. Okay, now we should potentially look into getting ourselves an ally over here like Poland. Range betrothal. Do you have a marriage option for him? No. A betrothal option for him? No. Our dear friend helps with extortionists. Want a betrothal for my second son, maybe? You have nothing going on. Big shame. Okay, well, we'll select from what is offered in this screen. Right now, the game being so early, it's very hard to find anyone just by looking around. Because uh, once the game starts, it takes a while for people to come into existence. We have a very limited range of options, but it gets better as time moves on. Let's get him someone who's halfway good at intrigue, honestly. Push his almost already kind of weak side. We want someone close in age. She's of the wrong religion though, but it doesn't really matter. Let's get her. And we have a bunch of titles to give out, which we didn't have before because we were a filthy pagan. Let's give these to people who don't like us right now. All that much. Capera. Where's my heir? There. Another commander slot. So I'm sending them with the expectation that they're not going to reach before the crusade actually starts. Oh, 
very good. We have gained one diplomacy. Quickly need to answer a message there, because that sometimes happens. And uh, since we're at 40 minutes anyway, I might as well just have not answered that message and actually just cut the recording at this point. But uh, I want to show you how we start building a castle town so we earn more money. Which is good. More money is always good. Alright, so um, yeah, we have become Christian, which already is a step in the right direction. It's not really important, but we can start working on converting which isn't bad and we're still writing our book so we are looking to invade Egypt and get some of that sweet sweet crusader investments <laughs> rewards because those are very important for early Christians so thank you for watching and let's hope this works out well for High Chief Mindaugas of Lithuania of the Geniminiatis family house Thing. Look at that symbol. Very interesting. It's kind of makes me a little bit sick because of all those thin lines on the side. When I'm recreating this for the flag on the thumbnail, I'm definitely going to just go by geometric shapes. I'm not trying to. Ah, maybe I. Ah, we'll see. You'll see how the thumbnail looks. Thanks for being there. Bye bye.